Congratulations on the movie. Congratulations on returning to this role. 15 yes. years after the original. 16 years later. 16 Here years later, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, considering the time difference, was did that make it easier or harder for you to get back into this uh, role of yours? I don't think it was easier or harder. Actually, I never thought of it that, that way. I think I approached it as a, a new movie, you know, uh, even though I had known the history of this character, but this character has moved on 20 years later. Mm -hmm. in, so she was telling another different story. And also as her, she has moved to another stage in her life. And I was actually quite curious to see how she had developed Eusulia, uh, because you know she she was one that was full of compassion and responsibility, and she was a caretaker. You know she took care of everyone, and everybody's uh, feelings were always ahead of her own. Um, but now, in to be able to come back to, to her and to think, now it's 17, 18 years later, has she attained the enlightenment that they spoke of? You know, once upon a time. And she has. She is now living in the mountains. She's living by herself. She's practicing her martial arts and finding peace, which all the warriors, that's what they want. But in sort of destiny, as how the, this genre of film always uh, evolves, is like there will be a promise that you would have made, you know, to keep either someone or something safe. And for her, it was the sort of destiny. The green, the green destiny. She had always promised that whatever happens, she would make sure that it would not fall into the wrong hands and she would keep it safe. And now there's been a reign of terror in the martial arts world, which she had hoped to leave it behind. But as a warrior and as you live by the code, you would not ignore it. You would not cr ignore the cry of help from fellow warriors. And so she has come down the mountain once again, and to find that, you know, there is calamity and destruction around. And being who she is, she's a great, you know, the warrior of strength. Um, she calls upon and she believes that there are, like her, out there who will live by the code of honor and tradition. And I think this sort of uh, the destiny was always part of the series of novels written by Wang Dulu, the original writer, mm -hmm. where uh, Ang Lee was inspired to make um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon 1. So that story had always been there. And I think it just needed to find the right people um, to come together with a fresh look um, of, of a genre of film that's been around for a very, very long time and much loved and respected. But, you know, we, sometimes with things, how do you make it fresh, uh, original again? You mm -hmm. know, it's like, as we know with movies, the themes of whether it's love or revenge or passion, it's the same themes. But how do you give it a, a new dressing? You know, how do you give it a new source of inspiration? And I think this time the filmmakers, uh, starting with Harvey Weinstein, who has always loved the, the Chinese culture and this genre of film, um, he put together, and which made it very difficult for me to say no, and I couldn't think of a reason why I would say no to him, uh, Master Yun Woping at the helm, who is mm -hmm. the grandmaster of this genre of film, but also um, like uh, producers like Morton Tildum, who's an amazing director himself, Peter Berg, who is also an amazing director, um, who came with much respect and love for our genre, but was ready to give it a different approach. And I think the synergy, the combination of these great filmmakers together, uh, and we have sort of destiny. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It is a great set of filmmakers that have come on board for this project. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, uh, the Grandmaster himself, Yun Wunping, excuse me if I got that wrong. <laughs> Master uh, Yun. Master Yun, thank you. Uh, but basically, and he was the choreographer on the first movie. Yes. This movie has taken on, on the role of director. Mm -hmm. What was it like, um, what was the working relationship between you two like on this film? Oh, we've always had a great relationship, and this is not the first film that I've worked with Master Yun. I've worked with him on uh, three other films before, where he was also the director and the stunt coordinate, martial arts coordinator. So, in fact, when he agreed to helm 
uh, sort of destiny. It was, it felt to me that yeah, it's the right choice. You know, I am, I am, I have confidence that I was not just going to be able to have a great martial arts sequences that were going to be, but emotionally we were very, uh, he would be very bonded with the story and the storytelling. Uh, so we had a great time. I think we had too much fun. And that sometimes is very scary. We're thinking, oh my God, shouldn't we be working harder? But, <laughs> <laughs> but why are we having so much fun? <laughs> and I really enjoy working with him because he is a very, he's a very direct director, put it this way. If you didn't like something, you know, the, the, I find that with uh, Asian directors, particularly uh, Chinese directors, they don't um, give you very flowery compliments. They don't say, oh, wow, that was fantastic. That was really good. And OK, let's do one more. And we're going, if it's really fantastic and really good, maybe we don't need to do another take, right? But with Master Yun, it's like if he hesitates, you know when you finish a take, whether it's action or drama, and he's going, then you know, OK, ready for the next take. Uh, but the minute he says, yes, good, that means we know that it was done properly. Uh, so when you work with a director like that, you have great confidence. You know that when it's in the can, that's what it means. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And then the first movie was done all in Mandarin. This one is done all in English. Was that, uh, what was that transition like? For me personally, it was easy because I don't read Chinese. Mm -hmm. So I was actually quite happy, <laughs> <laughs> which I shouldn't. Uh, but no, I think this, uh, this genre of film, I hope, now, when you watch it, it transcends the language. You know, when you watch a good movie, it doesn't matter what language it is spoken in. Because unless you knew Mandarin, you wouldn't understand the, the poetry that we, we talk about, you know, mm. the language. But then when you hear it in English, I think the most important thing is you feel the emotions of what the, 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 the how the story is unfolds uh, in front of you. So. Sometimes, I think nowadays, we are so used to watching movies and we don't think, oh, it's an Italian film, so we really should be watching it in, in Italian. Because English, at the present moment, seems like the universal language mm -hmm. anyway. But um, for me, it's very important that the integrity, the look, and the feel of these characters are there, rather than just what they are saying, in what language they are saying it in. Absolutely, yeah, and you've been you are known for doing your own stunts in a lot of your movies, and this it's obviously the same case here. Um, how much how much of your own stunt work did you get to do? Oh, everything. 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 I think that's the thing with um, I love it. I love the the physical side of it because it's really only in the movies that you get a chance to do all these amazing stunts, you know, like flying through the air and, you know, beating up like, a, you know, sword fighting with five, six guys charging at you with spears and still, you know, you know, fling them away. Um, it is exciting. It is very challenging. And the, the good thing is because I am able to do it right now. So um, mm. my thought is like, as long as I am able to do it, why not? Yeah, very good point. <laughs> and you know, you started studying. You studied ballet since you were four. Yes. And how much does that inform your your martial arts work in movies? It really helps tremendously. When I first started out, in fact, I drew on all my experience as a ballerina, as a dancer, because if you look at it, it's one form of movement into another. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's all about choreography, it's all about rhythm, it's all about timing, um, and it's about, you know, dancing with your opponent, per se. So, um, with that background, I was able to uh, pick up on steps and remember, you know, new movements very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I was also very flexible, and I had good strength and a control of my limbs, you know, especially my legs. <laughs> so I think it was very challenging for, especially at that time, when the stunt coordinator, you know, could ask this girl to like kick backwards and do splits in the air and, you know, do things that the boys would go, ouch, you know, maybe not. <laughs> so um, it helped, definitely it helped. Uh, and and. It continues to help because it keeps me fit. It keeps me very supple and agile. Great. 
Great. And has anybody talked to you about the possibility there of being a third Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon movie? <laughs> as long as it's not 16 years later, yeah. we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, great. Well, it's been great talking with you, Michelle. Thank, thank you, you very much. Oh, thank you.